joyfully felt. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee today and evermore. Amen. Amen. tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness. And to guide, to guide our, our feet, feet into, into the, the way, way of peace. As we continue our Advent pilgrimage, looking forward to the birth of our Lord and Savior Christ, let us in prayer and praise give voice to his peace set forth in the scriptures that Christ's kingdom shall come. Our service begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response appointed for today is Canticle 15, the Song of Mary Magnificent found on page 441 in your Book of Common Prayer. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. For this day, all from this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast, cast down the mighty from their thrones. And has lifted up the lonely. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to help. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers. To Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Here ends the canticle. A reading from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word, words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then he said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had sent from the Pharisees, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked them, him, why are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the triune God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I was reading this past week about a fellow priest and a friend who was trying to decide whether to move forward with a large capital campaign to build on to his church. He was at the point where he had raised a good bit of the funds that were needed for the project, but he still lacked six figures to complete the plan that he and the vestry had decided to do. So he wrote, am I being foolish or am I being faithful? Am I risking the money that we have raised from hardworking people or am I following God's plan? Faith or foolishness? Many other greater than he have been in that same place. What was Abraham even thinking when he set out with his entire family <clears throat> to go to a land that he'd never been to, risking everything for a voice that he thought he had heard? Or who was Moses to think he could stand up to the most powerful king in the land or to even attempt it as he had so much doubt himself about his own calling? And would you have advised your, or allowed your children to do what Peter and James and John did, leaving their work and their families, leaving their father in the boat with his nets, to follow a man that had just burst onto the scene and maybe even some were even thinking that he is God. Or then there's Paul who went from place to place, prison to prison, painfully misunderstood, but absolutely committed to proclaiming this Jesus that so many others had rejected. And then this morning, we read of Isaiah and Mary and a wild man named John who did just that. They followed their faith. They listened to the voice and they trusted that their God is faithful. You know, most stories in the Bible follow a pattern, a pattern of people who experience anguish and agony. They find themselves in trouble and they're wondering where God is in their lives. And then they come to sorrow and even sadness, whether sorrowful over something that could have been handled better or sadness over something that was out of their control. But these emotions, are always followed by hope and then the joy brought on by our faith. In our Old Testament reading this morning, Isaiah begins by proclaiming his call and by calming his people, by reminding them of the power and of the promise of the Lord. To proclaim to a people who are wondering where God is in their lives. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has chosen me to bring good news to a people who are wondering where God is, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, those who are filled with sorrow and have lost hope. Have faith. God is always faithful, he is saying. God will come and relieve our anguish and turn our sorrow into joy. And even though Israel is still in exile, Isaiah gives them hope and they revel in this good news. They respond with joy. And they say, I will greatly rejoice. I as in one voice. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God for he has clothed me and he has fed me. And my tears of anguish will bring forth good things. They may still be in exile, but they are rejoicing in the anticipation of the relief from their troubles and the what will be. Fred Craddock, a 20th century theologian, a brilliant preacher and teacher once said, to celebrate the future as a memory and to praise God for having already done what lies before us to do. Well, that is the nature of the life as a people of God. So I'll say that one more time. As Christians, we are called to celebrate the future as a memory and to praise God for having already done what lies before us to do. That's what we do. And so as Christians, we know what God has done and we know what he is going to do. And therefore, when we are troubled and sorrowful, we too can rejoice that God has already done what he's promised. And we can trust that he will do the same all of us. Even the beautiful Magnificat 
reflects this pattern of angst and sorrow and joyful celebration of the power of the Lord to take care of all of our needs. The Magnificat reflects the idea of what is past and what is present and what is old and what is new. God does the same power, but in a different way this time. Barren older women in the Old Testament miraculously have children, women like Sarah and Rebecca, Rachel and Elizabeth and Hannah. They lacked the hope of ever having a child. And I'll tell you, for women in biblical times, that was the main thing that they were expected to do, especially to have a male child. And while they suffered in anguish for their inability to bear children, they reached out to God who heard their cries and he filled their barren wombs with life. And his children then have been a part of God's plan for his kingdom. So you can see how that is reflected in Mary, a young girl, not married, not yet having the ability to have her ability to have children tested, but she has been chosen by God to bear the Lord, to bring down the powerful, to lift up the lowly, to fill up those who are hungry and who are lost, and to empty the purses of those who trust vainly only in their riches. She ties the past women to the present. God doing something old, but in a new way. Delight is entering the world in a new way. This is the song of joy, rejoicing on the strength and the might and the mercy and the hope. And of course, there's John, this man who professes the already, but the not yet. The man who, when asked who he is, he tells those asking him who he is not. I am not the Messiah. I am not one of the prophets. I am not the light, and I am not worthy. I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. I am the one who is here to say, rejoice, and don't worry about when Christ is coming. Live your life as a Christian and profess your faith. Rejoice in what God has given you. And it's Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians who says to pray without ceasing. For life is a continuous prayer, a recognition of all that we do have and we do know and that we should live in the present as if Christ were sitting here right now, sitting beside us. We should live in the present in the promise and of the hope of what we know of the past and of the hope then that leads to joy. And if we do that, if we live believing that the one who was promised will return because God is always faithful, if we live in that, then we can live in the confidence that we are his and that no matter how hard our lives are, we can trust that the power of God is stronger than any darkness that we encounter. And we won't be able to not share all that God has done for us. And we can joyfully share then that God is present and alive and active in our lives. And, and like Mary, we will sing with joy. We will sing that he has come to the help of his servants for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. And like Isaiah, we will share in being the anointed ones, the chosen, and we will greatly rejoice in the Lord and our whole being shall exalt in our God. And then like John, we can be the voice crying out in the wilderness of life and sorrow and hurt that the light is coming and we can then celebrate the future as if it were a memory. Last night in our blue Christmas service, I hope you saw that, and if not, you can go back and look at it at any time. But yes, last night, yesterday, we gave way to the sorrow. But this morning, on Gaudete Sunday, we will revel in the same joy of Isaiah and Mary and John in the isness of the was. For soon the light will come and all darkness will be dispelled, just as God has told us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we wait with joy for Jesus Christ, the one who is to come, let us offer prayers to God who sent his son as the true light into the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin, the Archbishop of Can Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Frank, our bishop, Jim, Kurt, Thomas, and Terry, our priests, John and Faye, our deacons, and for all other ministers and people, pray for the church. Ask your prayers for those who seek God or a deeper understanding of God. Pray that they might find God and be found by God. Ask your prayers for the good earth which God has given us. Pray that we have the wisdom and the will to conserve it. Ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the well-being of all people, for Donald, our president, Joseph, our president-elect, Brian and Henry, our governors, and Hardy, our mayor, for our first responders and the military, pray for justice and peace. Ask your prayers for racial harmony and unity and tolerance for diversity. Pray that we see in all people the face of our Savior, Jesus, and to practice his commandment to love one another. Ask your prayers for the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, those who mourn and the sick, especially those affected by the coronavirus. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all those lives who are closely linked with ours, especially the following members of our parish family who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week, especially Bob Davies, Mary Lewis, Henry Harris, 
Rhett Manea, Faye Forbes, Lillian Thomas, and those we now name either silently or aloud. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. I ask, your prayers, I ask for prayers of comfort and healing for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially the following members of our parish family. Sarah, Thomas, Jack, Carter, Frank, Tim, Jackie, Eddie, Lisa, Chong, Estelle, Janet, Faye, Helen, Bob and Marion, Carolyn, KJ, Gary and Tony, Maggie, Ron, Eunice, Alice, Biddy, Kenny, Lorraine, Chris, Don, Marilyn, Susan, and Tom, Harry and Hildred, Linda, Bob, Cindy, Lillian, Ben, Bobby, Betty, and we and those we now name either silently or aloud. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. I ask your prayers for the dying and the dead especially those who have died from the coronavirus, for victims of racial violence, and those for whom today will be their last day on earth. Pray for those who have died. Praise all saints in every generation in whom God has been manifested in their lives and ministry especially blessed Augustine, David, and Bridget. Pray that we may have grace to glorify God in our lives. O Emmanuel, our King and lawgiver, desire of all nations and savior of all peoples, come and save us, O Lord our God. Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you.
Now the altar flowers are given by Pat Bureau to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for our St. Augustine's family and especially for the many dedicated members that continue to provide their time and talent to allow us to continue to worship while the building is closed. Birthdays today or this week, birthday blessings for the day. Please uh, get real close to your screen or have someone um, pat you on the shoulder or hold your shoulder. Bob Davies, Mary Lewis, Henry Harris, Rhett Manea, Deacon Faye Forbes, and Lillian Thomas have birthdays this week. Let us pray for them now. Watch over these, your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they should fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon them and remain with them forever. Amen. And now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord. Thank you. 
things to mobile, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. 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 Our service uh, continues on page 361. We bring thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> salvation. 
by him and in him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Feed on them by faith with thanksgiving. Now everyone that picked up the reserved sacrament may receive the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Now I invite all those who are unable to receive the consecrated bread and wine this day, but who long for the grace and blessing of God through our Savior Jesus Christ, to join me in this prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now let us say together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence of, of our Savior Christ, came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing, and set you free from all sin. Amen. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great joy we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer, and his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. We appreciate that. And we invite you to stay for our virtual coffee hour. It's not an hour. It actually lasts about eight minutes. And then we're going to talk about the Advent offerings that we have been doing. So please stay for that. It's very exciting. It'll be led by uh, our group here, our team. So um, we're going to put you into breakout rooms momentarily and then um, bring you back.